morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful San Clemente. So happy you decided to join us here today. We are a trans-denominational center, which simply means that we welcome everyone. You're all welcome. Everyone is welcome here. You're welcome. <laughs> so whoever you are, whatever path you're on, you may call this home, because this sanctuary, this center is full of love and acceptance, and you are always welcome here. So my name is Judy Chapman. I am the assistant minister here at the center, and we're going to start the service with the flames of faith. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. And we light the candle for all forms of new thought honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner, Rick Dale lights the last candle. Please let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. I invite you now to join me in affirmative prayer. In this most sacred and holy moment, we join together on that united field of pure, loving God consciousness. Knowing that there truly is only one truth, and that truth is that there is only one divine essence. There is only one unconditional love infinite intelligence and is the first cause to all of creation. This one energy, this one divine essence lives and moves and is each one of us. We truly are the expression and we reveal the, all the qualities of God through our daily life. We are the joy, we are the love, we are the compassion of spirit. And I affirm this morning that we are alive, awake, and aware of this awakening within us. We know the truth and it sets us free. It is revealed to us in so many ways. For 
I know that each one of us is an excellent idea in the mind of God. I know that this service this morning unfolds in absolutely perfect order. <laughs> and that Dr. Heather's message is listened with spiritual ears. <laughs> and we know that we are in the presence of love. Everything is perfect. And so these words that I speak have already been created in mind, in our subconscious mind, in our body. They've already, it's already done. And so my heart is full of gratitude for this time together, for this knowledge, for this wisdom, for this teaching. I'm so grateful. And so I place these words in to that divine mind as I anchor this prayer in love. And we say together, and so it is. And now the affirmation is a greeting. Good morning. <laughs> We're going to put the Declaration of Principles up here, and let's read them together. I believe in God, the one who created intelligence, operating through the universe, and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon the law of mind, and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And now we're going to read today's affirmation. Read it like you mean it. I am a being of love and light. Divine feminine energy flows through me, receiving Nice job. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, and please welcome Allendale. So who's grateful? I think when we're grateful, everything around us, everything that we see, everything that we do becomes holy. So the song's about that.
paper. That was amazing. Thank you. My um, messages for the whole month are uh, the divine feminine in all. And although I don't intend to wear this for the whole service, it was cool. And so God gave us the opportunity to bundle up in our sanctuary as the divine feminine in all. It's women's month. Women's Month. Since I think 1910, I think so, that March the 8th was set aside as the day to honor women and women in the workplace. So just a little bit of information for you. Today my talk title is The Holy Reimagined. And what is holy or what is sacred? What is that divine presence is what we're going to talk about. And we see the divine feminine beyond gender. And yet, what the quotes from Ernest are really gender. It is the givingness of spirit to itself, Ernest says. Well, this is one of the earliest symbols for the sacred. It's a symbol for women. It's the divine feminine, because without women, there'd be no life. So yes, it's quite obvious. That's a naked woman's body in, from a cave. And when we were in Australia or New Zealand, I've forgotten which, but the sacred symbol is a spiral. And so that spiral, you'll see, it's that without beginning, without the end, that is forever moving and creating. And life comes from this, from this divine feminine. And a more um, clothed picture. <laughs> she is floating across the place with all of her, um, with the flowers flowing after her. When I was um, a child, I used to, of course, Saskatchewan clouds are always there. Lots of, um, lots of serious clouds that that look like curtains. They look like they look like goddess dresses. And I always thought that really was what they were as a child. Um, I love the stories. I love the stories of that goddess. And here's what Ernest Holmes says. He says, the masculine and feminine principles of being are as, as included in the andro androgynous one or first cause, God, as the universal parent, mind, and spirit. And he makes a point of saying that all beings, have both masculine and feminine. It's not, it's not limited to one gender, all of us do. And what I really want to talk about, well, what are the qualities of the divine feminine? And you know, um, by the way, Grant and Rita, Karen Wilson has a wonderful article in this month's Science of Mind magazine about the divine feminine. It's a friend of theirs that I met in Vancouver and I reconnected with at the, um, at the uh, conference in Denver. So it is, uh, so the divine feminine is that presence within us all that is life-giving, that is nurturing, that is loving, that is kind, and that is powerfully protective. So think about the divine feminine. It isn't just all, you know, think about a mother bear, for instance. If you get between the cubs and the mother, she isn't all gentle and light and sweetness. She's going to be ferocious because she's protecting her child, her babies, her cubs. And so that is part of the divine feminine in all of us, that, that desire to truly <coughs> protect and look after that, that within us. But when most people come to this center, if you haven't gone to another metaphysical church first, chances are if, you're, if you had any religious training at all, 
<coughs> that your idea of the of deity was masculine. In fact, the pronoun was he or his. The Lord's Prayer, our Father, not Father Mother, <coughs> our Father which art in heaven. So many of us, and so our whole culture, because the Western-based religions, the Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, are all based from the same seeds. <coughs> and of course, it is now very patriarchal. But it wasn't always. In the Jewish tradition, it wasn't always. You know, how many of you are aware of the scripture, prove me now herewith. Mm -hmm. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord God of hosts. And I will pour out such a treasure that you can't contain it. Well, the Lord God of hosts in the original Hebrew was Elohim. Is Elohim is Jewish for, or Hebrew for, the deity that is deities, both masculine and feminine. El, Loa, Elohim. So it's both masculine and feminine. So it's the amazing idea that this thing is all, contains all, is all beings. It's all, um, all, all of the presence, the, the androgynousness of each one of us, that we're both masculine and feminine. And why does this matter? <sighs> well, for one thing, for at least 5,000 years or so, at least the last 2,000 years, it really has been a man's man's world. And we're very happy that there are wonderful men in our world. It's not that we want it to be all women, although the Amazon idea really did appeal to me, not Basil's idea of Amazon, <laughs> but the Amazon where they're strong fighters and they just use men for pleasure and then they discard them. I mean, it was such a flip, right? So that actually appeals, but it's not too practical. Many years ago, actually it was written in 1982, there was a novel called The Mists of Avalon. I really was touched deeply by this novel. And the basis of the novel is the Arthurian myth told from women's point of view. What if? Yeah, you see, every single, every single sacred site on our planet that, and most of them have been confiscated by the Catholic Church, so they're now Catholic sites. But in the beginning, they were pagan, which just means from the country. They were pagan sites, and they honored the goddess. They honored the divine feminine. So, so in, this, in this story, which is just a remarkable story, it's the story of King Arthur and Genevieve and Lancelot and Morgan Le Fay, but Morgan Le Fay is the heroine. She is not the evil, conniving being. She's the heroine. She's the one that is the healer. She picks the, she, she understands nature and she uses it to heal. And she is one with it. It's, it's quite a beautiful book. And I was thinking about it as I was preparing for this. This divine presence is in all of us. And one of the things that we need to open to, I believe, is to reimagine what it could be like. Reimagine what it could be like if war wasn't our answer. What could it be like if peace was absolutely the first thing that you thought of? Collaboration and community and being with one another and choosing peace and well-being and health. And that, that life itself was so great and good to be lived. So, um, <coughs> You know how on Facebook things come at various times and um, 
So this morning, Facebook, came something that Pam Rock had posted a while ago, and Joyce Fournier had posted the same thing. And I thought, oh, okay, thank you, God. This one needs to be read. It's written by, uh, it's written by Audrey Loves Perry. Maybe not. <laughs> That's the signature at the bottom of this thing. And it is this, as the world fights to figure everything out, I'll be holding doors for strangers, letting people cut in front of me in traffic, saying good morning, keeping babies entertained in grocery lines, <laughs> stopping to talk with sales clerks, pat smiling at passers-by. Why? Because I will not stand idly by and live in a world where love is invisible, understanding and judging less, be kind to a stranger. Give grace to friends who are having a bad day. For giving up yourself today and every day. Be the change. Be the light. Start today and never stop. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So <laughs> that is something we can do, and it's very feminine. It's not aggressive and like we're going to fight because... Whatever we resist persists. If there's something that we think we don't like, by resisting it, we just bring more of it into our lives. If, what there's, if, there's, um, if there's a rude person in your life, by resisting that rudeness, you just invite more rudeness in. And in fact, what the person sees from you is the very same thing as you're seeing from him or her. So what resists persists, and so we can make another choice. I love the, I love the way it was languaged, because I will not stand idly by and live in a world where love is invisible. Let's make love visible. That's who we're here to be, and we're good at it. We're great at it. Look at our potluck that just keeps growing and growing. We're wonderful at letting love be visible. So as we're reimagining the holy, we can take, okay, we're, we can take that cloak off. <laughs> we'll put it back later. We can, as we're reimagining what's possible, we can, um, we can have those kind gestures where we're saying yes to life, where we're being the change we want to be. I told, I've told you this before, but it was something that really sticks with me. My, uh, my administrator in Bonita <coughs> is a very beautiful, kind woman, and she, um, she, it was her job to go to the post office. And the postal clerk was always grumpy, <laughs> always grumpy and quite rude. So she said, you watch, I'm going to get her to smile. I'm going to get her to be pleasant. And she made it her job that every time she went in, regardless of whether she could see the other woman, the woman, the clerk, was pretty impatient, pretty grumpy, she would come in saying, Good morning, good to see you, how are you today? She would make a point of being kind, being inclusive, being loving. We can all do that. We can all do it. What is the world that we want to see? It's our responsibility to bring it forth. So that's another thing about the divine feminine. I have not had children of my own, except for all of you, and because I didn't birth you, I did not have the pain of childbirth. But women continued having children anyway after the first woman had a child went, oh, you've got to be kidding. And God did not punish her. That's all mythology. But there is pain. There is pain. So, okay, when you know there's going to be pain, first of all, you already know, don't resist it. Make it welcome. This is part of life. 
And then choose what you do want. Take action for what you do want. And then you start seeing that sacred everywhere. When I teach first year class, I always ask, where do you see God? Where do you see the divine? Where do you see the, that divine beauty or power? And always, at least one person, sometimes the whole class says, in nature. I see it in nature. And here, where we live in beauty year round, even though it's a little colder than we think it should be at times, <laughs> We see it. We see it in the light through the trees. We see it in the ocean and the power of the ocean. And we see it in each other. We see it. We see it when we are when we are praising, when we are so grateful for the greatness that God is in our lives right now. Take a deep breath. As Reverend Judy said in the meditation, as you exhale, let your shoulders drop. Let your shoulders drop. Be current, be now, be here. Everything's all right in my world. Say that. Everything's all right in my world. Say it again. Everything's all right in my world. That sounds like you mean it. Good. Everything is all right in your world. Everything's all right in my world. That doesn't mean that I won't have pain. That doesn't mean that there won't be things that I would prefer to be different. But they'll only be different if I'm willing to do my part to change them. So the holy reimagined is to see it in every act of kindness. And then the great, great um, challenge for all of us is to see it where there isn't kindness, where there is cruelty, to see it where we probably wouldn't be able to see it if we weren't looking with our spiritual eyes. Rick and Karen are going to do a song that I'm going to quote a little bit of. It's, it, we first heard it by Jack Fowler, but he didn't write it. Peter Mayer wrote this song. And it's called, Everything is Holy Now. And when you really get that God is everywhere present, that means everywhere. That means in every person in the Senate, in every person in Congress, in the president, in the vice president, in, all, in everything. There is not a spot where God is not. There is not a spot where God is not. So we start looking from that place of oneness. And when we see beauty and peace and power and possibilities, they start to appear more often. It always makes me wonder, you know, there's a saying that what if everyone else is awakened? Everyone else has been transformed and I'm the only one left without being enlightened. And everyone is here as my teachers. That's a really good thing to ponder. It could be so. It could be so. So, listen to the lyrics of their song when they sing it, but I, wanted, I want to read you some of them because I don't want you to miss any of it. When I first heard it, it made me weep. Because he begins by saying, in his past, in church, the priest would bless, bless the bread and wine, and then it would be now holy. And he says, and you know, all of the miracles of Jesus, but he says, wine from water is not so small but an even better magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the th challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, but finding where there isn't one. 
but finding where there isn't one. Reimagining the holy is to see it in every person, in every circumstance, in every country, starting with our own, all over the heavenly place. And so it is. So it is. We're going to pray together. In this holy moment of now, I give great thanks for the beauty that I see. I begin with that attitude of gratitude. I begin with the awareness that all is well and all shall be well that with God all things are possible and all things are good and very good and only good. And so I stretch my understanding of the divine to be more than a person, male or female, to stretch that understanding that this presence, invisible and everlasting, is the first cause of all creation, is that thing itself that is right here, right now, moving throughout all of creation, spreading its beauty everywhere, spreading its love everywhere. Knowing that I am one with this, I, what I know for myself, I know for each and every one, I know something wonderful is occurring right now that each life, my life, and each one's life is an expression of the divine. Therefore, there is wholeness, completeness, perfection in all life. That there is good and very good and only good in all life. I speak this word for prosperity, knowing that God is my source. It doesn't matter to me what happens in the stock market what happens in the economy. God is my source, and I accept greater and greater financial freedom. And because God is the source of not only prosperity, but life itself, I accept vital life, life that is whole, complete, and perfect, that there is perfect expression of God's life through me. I also speak this word for creativity, that the creativity of the divine is my creativity here and now. That new ideas are flowing to me and flowing through me as awareness that there is more, that there's more good, that there's more greatness, that there's more truth. What I know is Something is unfolding through each one of us. It is God's grace. It is God's joy. It's God's presence. And I'm so very thankful this is so, and I simply, I simply accept that this word is already complete. So I release it to the law that always says, yes, my beloved, it is done. And please say with me if you're in agreement, and so it is. entertainment. I've got my divine feminine with me. Someone told me that if women ran the world, there would be no war. There would just be a bunch of countries not talking to each other. 
When I was a boy each week, on Sunday we would go to church and pay attention to the priest. And he would read the Holy Word and consecrate the Holy Bread. And everyone would kneel and bow. Today the only difference is everything is holy now. Everything. Everything, everything is holy now. When I was in Sunday school, we would learn about the time. Moses let the sea into Jesus made the water wide. affirmative prayer and that there if if the person is open and receptive to whatever is being prayed for there must be a demonstration or experience so we're going to have someone share a demonstration every Sunday and um, I will read it to you so all you need to do is write it tell me whether you want your name or not and send it to me. My email address is drheather at cslcb.org or send it to the office. So it will get here and then I'll just change, uh, change them up. But this morning you actually get in person Grant McPhail. Please come forward and tell us of your experience. 
and demonstrations and I don't know if this is just me or everybody but sometimes we, when life throws a problem suddenly at you you don't instantly go to there you try and solve it at least I do and an experience we had as some of you know we have a home in Vancouver Canada and because of the shortage of housing up there they just can't build them quick enough uh, they instituted a new tax called an empty homes tax, which means if you have a home in the city and you, it's not your primary residence, you have to rent it out six months in each calendar year. And if you don't rent it out, the additional tax in our case would have been over $40,000 for the year. So it's very important to rent it out. And it's six months in the calendar year. So last year we had the place rented for from January through April, four months, which meant and then we're there for the summer. And that doesn't count, by the way. And it was vital that we rented it for uh, November and December to make our six months for the year. And we wanted to have it rented longer than that because we have another six months now in 2020. So we did get it rented, but the people didn't want it till the end of December. So we gave them two free months just to be on the lease. They weren't going to use the place, but we had the lease that long. And uh, all of a sudden, just before, to, towards the end of our stay there, they canceled. Oh. So now we're faced with getting a new tenant immediately. And it, as luck would have it, it happened to be a weekend when Heather came to visit with us. And she set me straight pretty quickly, said, let's do a treatment. And we, we did a treatment. And it's funny how sometimes treatments take time, sometimes they're really quick. Within 48 hours, we had a new tenant that wanted to move in on the 1st of November, which dealt with that month, those two months of the year and are staying right through to the end of July when we go up in August. So we're, kind of, we're good for two years. That's a demonstration. Breathe, breathe. That is a wonderful demonstration. You know, um, so as the stewards are coming forward, it's time for us to share our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. And I just want to remind you that even though I talked about our wonderful new spiritual leader, that our center is completely supported by the generosity of the people who attend it. You're the ones who keep this place going. Come, 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 come. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you for being so polite. <laughs> We're going to read our prosperity affirmation together, and then we're going to have a few seconds of gratitude, because of, as Reverend Karen said, gratitude is a multiplier. And then we're going to uh, hear, then we're going to sing, I send my love, and then we're going to listen to Diane, what she's going to sing. All right. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
acknowledge those of you who are in service today or have been in service this week. So if that's you, please stand so we can give you a whole bunch of love. And if the practitioners would remain standing, the practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. And if you want your life transformed, make an appointment with one of these people. You'd be so happy that you did to get a taste of it today. There will be three practitioners who will be here to serve you, Rick Dale, Lorianne Wissey, and Dave Friedman. And two of them will, well, they may be there, one may be in the, in the tranquility room, but they'll be somewhere around. So let's acknowledge our practitioners. <laughs> and also, um, is anyone here for the very first time today? If so, we have a gift for you right here up front. If you could keep your hand raised so that people could, so that our pushers can find you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to acknowledge you. And then inside your uh, packet, there's a welcome card. If you take it to, take, fill it out and take it to the bookstore, you'll receive another gift. So, congregation, please repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening here today. Something wonderful is happening here today. It's this thing called you. It's this thing called you. You are a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being. You don't need to be fixed. You don't need to be You're not broken. You're whole, complete, perfect. You're whole, complete, perfect. Just the way you are. Just the way you are. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. And oh, by the way, I'm now going to acknowledge God's greatest ideas. And I don't want them to stand right here. So if you have if you have a birthday in the month of March, would you please stand so we can acknowledge you? is the birthday of Theodore Geisel, also known as Dr. Seuss. So today's announcements will feature some of his fun and witty wisdom. And the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would start on Who Pudding and rare Who Roast Beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. Stay for our communal feast today, right after the service, to commune and connect with the other CSLC views. Be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. Stay for a conscious connection and say what you feel about today's topic. It meets right here in the sanctuary from 12 to 12.30, and child care is available. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. This Wednesday night, steer yourself to our Wednesday's Wisdom Service, where our very own Lorianne Witte will present Soul to Soul Love, featuring Joel Callan on piano. Come at seven and be inspired. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. Starting today, let's guarantee success for our teens as they begin their fundraising efforts to attend teen camp. Connect with them at the back of the room and make their dream of camp come true. Oh, the meetings you'll go to. There's so much to fix. Status updates at dawn, status check-ins at six, agendas to shorten, agendas to lengthen, budgets to cut, and projections to strengthen. That actually was not Dr. Seuss, but a parody. <laughs> Our annual gender, general meeting is the last Sunday of the month. More information will be available as it approaches. Today, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. And today's flowers are from Dan Martin because he couldn't be here today, but he wanted to remind each of us how special we are. Thank you, Dan, if you're watching. 
The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you go. So please take your inserts home with you and read them over. <laughs> and now, thing one, thing two, and the rest of the crew.